afternoon, fellow citizens. This is the Citizens Chat Show. My name is Masesa Demiano, and I welcome you again to this episode of uh, our conversation on the Chat Show UG. As usual, we are streaming live on YouTube, uh, citizens on uh, Civic Space TV. We're also live on Facebook, on, uh, of course, Civic Space TV as well. But also, importantly, on Twitter, we are running the hashtag uh, Chat Show UG. But also, we've been into the week of... Uh, uh, international commemorating the International uh, Day on Democracy. So we have uh, the hashtag running, Democracy Day UG. And also, uh, you can also follow our different handles. Of course, uh, Democracy Day Uganda. We are on Civic Space TV on uh, Twitter. We also Civic Space TV on uh, uh, CCG, uh, CCGA1. For, for These are where the conversations are happening. And of course, uh, it's a week of... Uh, democracy and uh, we have our topic trying to taking stock of uh, uh, Uganda's democracy and of course uh, we need to possibly give you a, a little background. Uh, in 2014 the Honorable Gerard Karuhanga uh, raised a motion for commemoration of uh, this day and uh, also raised uh, uh, provided for, for the parliament to provide avenues for which to, to have this day uh, uh, commemorated, and of course, Parliament adopted that. So, uh, joined on the panel today are one, of course, uh, the person who, who raised this motion in Parliament, and of course, we'll see how this discussion will go on. Uh, back to my panelists, I need to first, of course, with uh, Gerard himself. Uh, Gerard Karhanga, you're welcome. Gerard is uh, a former member of Parliament of uh, uh, Tungama Municipality. Jared, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm glad to be here. Uh, it's an honor um, to contribute to uh, the discourse on democracy. Mm -hmm. We hope we can be more democratic. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and this is your, your maiden appearance on this show. This is the Civic Space TV show and uh, the chat show UG. Yeah. Uh, then uh, from uh, Gerard, we have uh, Sarah Bilete, uh, the executive director with the Center for Constitutional Governance, and also a regular panelist here. A lawyer as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Damien. And uh, good afternoon, viewers. I'm mm. glad to be back mm -hmm. to, on this Citizens Chat Show. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. And always a pleasure seeing you. And another appearance, so the second appearance, in almost the scope of a week, just uh, one week, is uh, Professor Latigo Genga. Uh, he's uh, a professor of agriculture, he's uh, a politician, he's an academia, but also a former member of parliament of Agago. Uh, Honorable, you're welcome, Professor. Thank you very much, Damien. Mm -hmm. I, I know you, you, you want to cushion my, my professorship to <laughs> agriculture, but <laughs> I, I, I'm a professor of insects, like we don't have to say. <laughs> were you part but, of, uh, were you deployed on the, when we had the, the locust? locust. <laughs> yeah, I wrote an article on locust law. No. But, but uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be on, on this show again, and, and uh, greetings to all the viewers. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor. Then uh, finally is uh, Monica Moding. Uh, she's uh, also just a former member of parliament yes. and also a lawyer mm -hmm. and uh, a gender activist yes. or female activist, you would want to say. Quite yeah. comfortable with your introduction. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you, thank, you. That's thank you very much uh, for, for honoring our invitation. Thank uh, you so honorable. much. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. You know, when you talk about civic space, mm. it's a place to enjoy because that is where the talk of the nation is, mm. I think. And uh, we thank you for the opportunity as civic space to be here to engage, yeah, to engage you. with the public. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, my panel is full with uh, people who really would want to dissect this uh, topic very well. But uh, now that uh, the rest are honorables, and we only have one, I think Sarah, the people always call you honorable. No, no, no. I, but, <laughs> 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 because, <laughs> In ways I mean, Because she, she was because contested at some point. Because that title comes with responsibility. <laughs> Voters might call me throughout the night. <laughs> <laughs> Another characteristic of our uh, democracy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I need to start with you, sir. Uh, Since we, of course, we are in the civil society, and of, most times the civil society are the ones that really champion and make a lot of noise around some of uh, these days. So I need to start with you. What does the International Democracy Week, what they mean to Ugandans and to Uganda itself? Well, to Ugandans, I think there is very little knowledge of this day. Mm -hmm. This day was uh, enacted in 207 starting with the International Parliamentary Union, 
then adopted by the UN and uh, the day of September 15th, gazetted as a day for taking stock of democracy in different countries mm. globally. So it's a day we should reflect on our democracy, where we want to be, where we are, what are the challenges, what are the, you know, the, what is the journey that we need to walk for Uganda to be classified as a democracy. If you asked me today whether Uganda is a democracy, I don't even know whether we are on, on the journey yet, on the road, <laughs> <laughs> on the road. Theoretically, we are on the road to democracy. Kenya uses the, you know, the tagline of the Janet Cannon. <laughs> I, I don't know whether they will reach. <laughs> yes. So I don't know how we can craft our own journey. Yeah. Theoretically, we have a constitution that is averagely, mm -hmm. you know, providing for, for, for democracy to prevail in average terms. We can still do a lot more with the constitution, especially the distortions that have happened which shouldn't have happened in the mm. first place. Mm. What the, the big missing link in our constitution, I'm still handling the theoretical aspect, is the failure to have an organized arrangement for political handoff of power. And that has been our challenge since independence. I think it's important for viewers, and I know the viewership goes beyond Uganda, of this mm. TV. Yeah, true to know that Uganda has never had a peaceful handoff of power for six decades of independence. Even at independence, some scholars have said, as much as the union, the union yeah. was lowered down, but the process to the lowering, including the election that led you know, to, to the first government, which was also violent, so even that transition from, from the colonial administrators was also not as peaceful as people may, may want to project. So theoretically, we are on the journey to, to democracy or Damascus. <laughs> and, but practically, we have a lot of bottlenecks. Yeah, and many rivers to close. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sarah. And maybe, maybe to, to the Honorable Karuhanga, and of course you, of course, tabled this motion in Parliament, and it was about adopted to have this day commemorated annually. I would want you to, to first throw us some light on what this day really means, how it would mean to Ugandans out there. If there is one thing that um, cuts across the globe and has so much importance in the progress of humanity is democracy. Mm -hmm. If people can choose their leaders periodically and the leaders are accountable to the people mm -hmm. because the mandate that the leaders hold is basically derived from that very moment when a person enters the, that ballot holding both. both and he, he or she casts her vote makes that decision that, in my opinion, Professor Latigo is going to be my member of parliament. That's a very honorable, cardinal, and critical role any citizen should play. Now, that must be respected. Because it, it has so many dividends that we can pick from, from the very actions of democracy. So, Put this into context. The world having chosen to make this a special week, I think it, it can't, it, there couldn't have been a greater statement as the importance of democracy than choosing a time in the air and say, in this moment, this particular period, we should enhance, talk about, discuss factors and issues of democracy. So, in our own context as a country, the journey is, the, is, is indeed, like um, our sister clearly put it, is indeed we have a long way to go. Um, but let's not lose all the hope. You know, um, just like the common adage goes, that um, even a journey of a thousand miles, you begin with a step. 
Honestly, in 1996, one would have thought, one could easily have believed that uh, the paramilitarization, the, 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 the basically the establishment of that constitution was, a, was, 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 a, was some step because we had two terms for president. And if you read the preamble of that constitution, it, it, it quickly, in its first paragraphs, invokes our history. Because it says, look, we, we know where we've come from. <laughs> so please, let's have a leader for two terms. <laughs> and 2005, uh, Professor, are you in the parliament? I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 so 2005. Okay. So, Those tragic moments in, in my political life. Yes. Oh. Unfortunately, yeah. we, we saw one of the, the big steps in abusing a very critical uh, um, and cardinal document, our constitution, and when the uh, the age, uh, the, the term limits, the term limits were moved. Now, of course, come to our tenth parliament, the last nail. Oh. Um, <laughs> because people said, okay, maybe say, maybe age can help us. And then, <laughs> even now, age said, ah, <laughs> even now, age <clears throat> we threw it uh, through the window. So, and and uh, and that has its huge challenges because it takes away hope. See, when you, 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 you get hope out of people and, and, and they become hopeless, then they, they literally lose their humanity because a human being is supposed to be hopeful looking up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment you keep, you keep communicating that um, uh, we are the Alpha and the Omega, uh, we are here, we, you know, like saying we are here, and they say they were chased, they were here mm. <laughs> some time back, and we are here to stay. So you basically want to clearly <laughs> <laughs> communicate completely this, uh, you get people who are very, very hopeless. Mm. But, but humanity has its ways. I, I keep thinking whoever thinks that Ugandans have completely resigned and given up must be really wrong. And, and sometimes it takes, it takes a few hopeful people to really restore our hope of the nation. So we, we still believe uh, we'll get on track um, as a country. It's going to be a struggle. Unfortunately, when you look at the other old democracies, it doesn't seem to come easily. That's the other thing we must appreciate. It seems to be going to be a struggle that it will happen over time. But we need it faster than it should have because, I mean, Six years of independence, and um, we still <laughs> 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 we are still at <laughs> baby steps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope this will come first. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Aronga. Uh, Professor Latigo, uh, your your reflection on uh, democracy day and what it means to Ugandans. Um, I be, I believe this, you know, regardless regardless of uh, of all the has happened in the country, we, we will not give up. And so a week like this and a day like this is a, it's a day for, for reflection and a, a day for looking at those, those tiny possibilities that show themselves to the keen eye and will say, yeah. There's a possibility, and let's pursue it. Mm. Of course, the, the, you know the, the the big challenge with democracy is that anybody can use the word. Mm. Even the the communists will say democratic people's republic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, two days ago, I was democratic I, republic I, of Congo. <laughs> I was I was I was uh, I was watching. Uh, uh, a previous interview by Al Zazera of our president, and and the guy, the, the interviewer asked him, uh, "How would you, how would you, uh, how are you going to be remembered as a dictator?" And then, the, and the president first said, re reflected like he did not understand the first question, and so the question was repeated, <laughs> and when it was repeated, and he said. Oh, uh, uh, after so many elections, that must be some kind of uh, dictatorship. You know, elections are not democracy. 
it is the spirit of that election that makes an election democratic. Mm. That the core definition of democracy in, from the perspective of people mm -hmm. is that it is about us. Once it becomes an individual, then that is not an ideal that you want to pursue. And in the end, individuals, fortunately, are very mortal. <laughs> and they decay like, like, like those atomic particles. So when they reach their half-life and beyond, they will become irrelevant. Then an opportunity will come, and naturally. But for our country, I, a moment like this, it's a moment to talk not only to the country, but to the leaders who have this illusion that they are exceptional, that they are unique. You are not. Uh, in the infiniteness of the universe, we are all nothing. Mm -hmm. And until you recognize that and, and, and say, let me play my part and allow others to play their part. Once that feeling comes, then the process of democratization hey, will, 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 will speed up so quickly in our country. Okay, thank you very much, Professor, for that one. And okay. uh, finally, uh, Honorable Monica, on this International. about the, the yes, democracy. Okay, for, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, Civic Space TV because you're offering uh, citizens the opportunity to have this conversation as well as reflect on where we are as a country. And uh, for the opportunity to have this conversation, we see, I think we need to see it from the perspective of the frameworks, mm -hmm. the state of Uganda's economy, I mean, um, democracy, how far we've come, but basically the frameworks that we, 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 we have internationally, how is Uganda fitting mm -hmm. in those frameworks? And then we can make, of course, we may not individually here make our conclusions. We leave it to the, the public and individuals to make their own individual analysis based on these uh, different issues that we see. So when we, we, we review what democracy is and what it's supposed to be, the ideal, of course, it is what the highest level of effective management of society. And ideally, Every nation in the world, every good country should uh, aspire to have such an ideal, you know, uh, effective way to enforce human rights, to manage society, law and order. And of course, one of the parameters we have is that there are regular elections, free and fair, mm. first of all. They may be, yeah, Sarah said they are theoretical in a sense. Um, uh, the, the theoretical aspect that we have as a country, but how is Uganda faring in terms of organizing regular free and fair elections? Mm -hmm. And I think that if we look at it from that perspective, then we bring in all these other things and assess our own state. Mm -hmm. Is it now progressing towards Canaan? Is it progressing towards the Damascus means a total confusion and a loss? Mm -hmm. Of, of direction. <laughs> so when I was reflecting on it, well, as a country, we, we have regular elections. And uh, I think uh, since 1995, we've had a five-year term re-elections, although as parliament, we attempted to push it. It's a ritual that we go through. <laughs> so in, 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 a, in that ritualistic approach, yes, we have elections, we have regular elections. But how are they organized? The question of how they are organized and, of course, uh, what happens after. Because every after election, I think, ends up in court. Apart from the 1996 election, the rest of them, I think, have ended up in court being challenged by one or another. Mm -hmm. Was the one of 1996 in court? But was it free and fair? <clears throat> Because, of course, going to court under, is an indication. Under, under single parties. <laughs> <laughs> under the movement system. <laughs> One indicator that this has not been a fair process. So, 1980, we had an election. In 1996, 2000, 2006, 2011, and then 16, and now. And all of those ones have that sequence of ending up in courts of law. So, 
Yes, we may have the regular election, but the outcome is always challenged. So what is the state of that? Mm -hmm. Free and fair elections as well. So, uh, of course, that is one parameter. The other parameter is whether citizens participate in active civic life and politics. Mm -hmm. There is protection of human rights and enforcement. There is rule of law and due process of the law being followed. So that comprehensive framework, we need to analyze it from that perspective and see where is Uganda now at age what? 60 in terms of post-independence uh, politics of Uganda. So from that perspective, of course, then we see a lot of all these issues and uh, one can easily conclude, make their own conclusion as a citizen in terms of the state or where we are as a country. But it's not a, a, good, a good picture. Certainly all those areas, there are so many different issues that can guide and tell you who is making that assessment that indeed Uganda perhaps is going to a Damascus of some sort. You are in your journey. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I need to draw a map. Now we need to draw Damascus. that map and see where we are going. I, I, I think I for one it is a Damascus. It cannot be a canon. It cannot be a canon. Yeah. So yeah, from that perspective mm. I think that, that was my the Damascus. Reflection. So we need to, <laughs> to see how well we can play this. Yeah. So uh, let me Jenny. get back to, let us dig a little deeper, and uh, I will go back to the, the Honorable Gerard. Mm -hmm. um, our national objectives and directives of our state policy, as well as uh, the regional and international uh, protocols, categorize rights into political rights, social, uh, economic, and cultural rights, as well as rights of uh, minorities. So we're asking, how would you score Uganda's performance on uh, these rights? <laughs> uh, Which one? Civil? Should we put it? Your own <laughs> economic? Political, <laughs> social, <laughs> economic. Civil political rights. Okay. Sometimes um, I, I actually respect teachers mm. because um, you can have a very unique case where you have the bottom 10 and then you have to rank them as well. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and if if a, if 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 a pupil has always been the, among the last two, so sometimes the teacher really struggles to whether to write that position again. Mm -hmm. But then they may have no choice but to rewrite it again. Room for improvement. <laughs> so in, in our own situation. <laughs> In our own situation, it is really sad. Um, it's an talking about human rights, you'd want to think that the, the current regime <coughs> that is running our country would really have every reason to respect human rights. Appreciating where they started from. From a stolen election, apparently, in 1980, Oh, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> said, <"Apparently." laughs> so allegedly, so allegedly, maybe, and then to a team of largely young men and women who are also largely educated, appreciated the situation pertaining prevailing in our country at that time, and said, "Okay, let's take the most." Uh, I think the, the highest levels of you now. Sacrifice. You see, when, when we talk about okay. civic actions, uh, uh, and by the way, this is when people, people, when people quell demonstrations, I even really sometimes don't get it. Because if you could reach a point and say, for us, let's pick arms. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Yeah, and then what about these ones who are saying we are demonstrating with Manila? <laughs> sure, why wouldn't you? <laughs> why wouldn't you respect them? <laughs> so they took that direction, picked arms, um, Fought to restore democracy, mm. rule of law, oh, respect yeah. for human rights. Mm. Thousands, thousands of people died. Many, many lost their limbs. And blood was shed. Everyone thought, yes, this is worth it. We can sacrifice for for real transition now. And indeed they came and said, oh, hey, this is a fundamental change. Indeed. Mm. <laughs> and so I can imagine for us who are really, I think, uh, who are really little, 
But I can imagine people who are watching these young men and women mm -hmm. marching Kampala. Mm. One could have imagined that, yes, maybe mm. this time round. But of course, uh, there are those who had seen other mm -hmm. situations before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when you read some, some of the writings, you, could, you can see there was also there those who really had real doubts. Yeah, mm -hmm. they had real doubts. Mm -hmm. And so we, we had thought, uh, um, as, as, as we, we passed through schools and kept following this government, that maybe, but to imagine that we would subsequently see incidents, like what we saw in Kasese, for instance. You see incidents like what we saw in the previous elections. In Arua. Where in Arua. <laughs> here in Kampala. Mm. Even in constituencies, just imagine that you have a, a, a mere, like in Nintunga, my own case, it's about five kilometers radius. A small constituency. <laughs> 18 polling stations. They added two, I think now there are 20. You have soldiers all over the place beating up people, but also lining up to vote in uniform, irrespective of whether they're in, <laughs> in, 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 in the voters' register, whether in uniform, um, and running from one polling station to another, and then another, and then another. So you have, you, you have at the back of your mind, you have this hindsight appreciating where the, this team of leaders emanated, started from. And then you see the very actions that they have kept engaged in over time, decade after decade. And then you are thinking, we really need to think a little harder and put our heads together and see how we can fix our situation. Democracy is, is, is not... <laughs> So you see, is democracy. It <laughs> you see, it's not um, <laughs> fundamental it's, it's, change. It's not some type of cloud somewhere. Mm -hmm. In you know, you could say um, there is a cloud somewhere up there. In one of the types. No, it's it's the way of life. It's the way of managing public affairs. I don't think the uh, actually I think it's Abraham Lincoln who put it in the m most. I think uh, appreciated of way, of way saying, look, this is a government of the people, by the people, and for the, the people. people. Mm -hmm. So in, 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 for starters, it is of the people. Then it is by. So the by, the, lead, the people stand up and say, yes, we are choosing, this, this is, these are our leaders. Mm -hmm. And then it is for. Service delivery. So you respect their human rights, you respect their, and you are accountable to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the parameters are known. You must be accountable if you mean democracy. You must hold free and fair elections. You must respect human rights. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and, and unfortunately, then it becomes a song. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we have a democracy. Uh, uh, and actually, it can be so vulgarized that people begin to think that, by the way, maybe we don't actually need democracy. Because then you, you, people begin thinking that, eh, but if this is what democracy is, then, you then, then actually you don't need democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, that's the danger, actually. That's the, the, the bigger danger, mm. the, the vulgarization of it. Because, you see, democracy is a great thing. It is. it is so great, so important, that you need it for human progress, mm -hmm. for stability, for managing public affairs. Mm. But in our current situation in Uganda, we've had a series of, of, of years that have vulgarized this democracy. Mm. And the danger with that is that the, the younger generations can begin thinking that maybe if this is what democracy means, then democracy is, 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 is horrible. Mm. Mm. But we don't mm. need it. Mm. <laughs> but we need to give them hope that what we've been seeing is basically a window dressing mm. uh, of what actually democracy is. And, and, and in some cases, actually, they have been very clear. They have been... Um, over it. They have gone really ruthless. Mm. So democracy is completely different from what we are seeing uh, prevailing in our own situation. And um, we hope the, the, the citizens of this country one day will, will hear the call 
and turn around the situation in our country and be really democratic. Mm -hmm. Mm. True. <laughs> 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 not, not a promise. <laughs> Sarah, I would, I, I, would, <laughs> Sarah, I would believe you would want to give a rejoinder. Mm. Yeah, but, but uh, then uh, Honorable is asking how, <laughs> but I the think question I is how? could give us a rejoinder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, I agree with the submissions of Honorable Karanga. Maybe what I could add is there is a deliberate attempt by some element in the executive. Because normally we say government, mm -hmm. and then we end up blaming the other arms of mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. that are trying the best they can in the given circumstances mm -hmm. to salvage a few rights and freedoms. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are some elements who are promoting a narrative that human rights are foreign. Maybe because we speak about them in English, <laughs> we might need to find a whole <laughs> Because <laughs> human rights are inherent rights. Every person is born with these rights. Mm -hmm. So for somebody to disabuse, I don't know how to call it even, to say that these are foreign concepts by civil society, that there is that deliberate narrative. So if every human being is born with rights mm -hmm. by virtue of being a human being, how can human rights be a foreign, foreign concept? Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to keep domesticating it <laughs> and, and stop talking about it in English mm -hmm. <laughs> but so that people understand that actually these rights, and, and even in our traditional setup, they were respected mm -hmm. in African traditional societies. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing foreign about them. But that narrative is intended to give comfort and shield the human rights abusers mm -hmm. and blind the people mm -hmm. who are not taking time to further interrogate why government is even interested in propagating such a narrative. But examining our civil and political rights, we, I think, as we speak, just in this month of, uh, of democracy, 54 civil society organizations were arbitrarily suspended. We have been waiting for action as promised, but uh, because maybe also we put the bureau on notice, that is not constituted. You oh. have a secretariat usurping the functions of the board and the adjudication committee and the executive director of the <coughs> NGO bureau is now the investigator, prosecutor, judge, jury, <laughs> and even audience in one person. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're waiting for your own, your own as well. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am not one expecting one, it. One, one, <laughs> I am not expecting it soon. <laughs> but, but I think it, that's what I want to mm. use as the other stick mm. on civic rights in this country. Mm. So if citizens, because civil society agencies are citizens' agencies, mm. if citizens' agencies mm. cannot mobilize mm. and organize and, and, and engage, then what civic rights are we talking about? Mm. Let's look at other institutions of citizenship, the cooperative movement. Was when you talk now, government people, and there's a minister for cooperatives. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that minister is ministering, but he's he ministering circles. <laughs> they tell you co cooperatives were privatized. I don't really know that arrangement <laughs> of privatizing. <laughs> Cooperatives. To be dissolved due to public interest. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but our economic status as a country is the best yardstick to judge mm -hmm. whether citizens' agencies like cooperatives yeah. exist, whether there is any organized way, any deliberate, or even attempts to have organized production, have organized markets, because we still have 78% of our population in agriculture. The second biggest employer other than agriculture is border border. Mm. And that's why we as a country, mm. after six decades, agriculture, where even mm. the, the majority of these 78% are not in the money economy, mm. 
And then following that, the biggest employer is Boda Bod. And we sit in our comfortable spaces and say there is progress. I really uh, uh, normally uh, <laughs> I quarrel with the people <laughs> who think there is progress. Because I can't put my hands on that so-called progress. Economically, I cannot put my hands on economic progress of this country. Politically, that is a nightmare. <laughs> Even when you are thinking of sleeping, you already resist that sleep. <laughs> when you talk about the political challenges of this country, socially, even citizens' agencies are being closed. And there's a further directive of other DCs to further curtail the work of civil society organizations. Mm -hmm. so, so really, when you put things on that weighing scale, that's that I want to talk about the minority groups, especially the vulnerable groups, and we saw how the little help that was intended to help the, the most vulnerable, the vulnerable communities and households in this country was abused. A hundred thousand shillings for child headed families, for families headed by the elderly, for families headed by unworking single mothers, for families headed by food vendors. Stolen by people who put, a, put on suits and take off as leaders of this country. Very unfortunate. I want unfortunate. to just re yes. make a rejoinder mm. before mm. Professor comes, yes. before I forget uh, the point that Honorable Karuhanga raises. Uh, of course, the picture that this gives us is really not a very good picture. It's grim. Mm. A lot of times when I think about these issues, <clears throat> I don't know about you people, but I get... Uh, some tightening of the heart. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like my heart is about to pop out. Mm. It's exploding. I don't know how Ugandans are feeling right now. But me, at my level, where at least I can afford the basics of life in this kind of affair, when I think about it, and when I'm sleeping at night and I try to reflect on my country and the status of enforcement of you know human rights in this country, issues of democracy and all that. I get um, some feeling in my heart like I'm about to explode I'm, or die or something I like your heart. Don't wake up straight. To <laughs> there is some pain. Huh? There is some pain that you feel because you see something and you're like, what more can I do? And I think it's a helplessness right now that is taking a toll on Ugandans. And I don't know the status of many people, but I have this feeling that Ugandans have reached a point where they feel so helpless about the situation and there's nothing much they can do. But I don't want to conclude that it's a hopelessness. I know there is a helplessness. Why? Because for that how to happen, there must be some leverage in terms of, there must be a, a I think there must be a critical mass of empowered citizens, mm. economically, first of all, and in other ways. But when I look at a country like Uganda, where the 70% that you talk about are in the agriculture sector, they are not in the money economy, I don't know how that fundamental change now, Gerald, you talk about, mm -hmm. <laughs> which we need so much in this time, can happen. Mm. Number two, um, yes, the hopelessness that we see in the country. Mm. Because then if there was a hope, a way out for citizens to take action, then the available opportunities would be utilized. Parliament, for example, would be a source of hope. We've just come out of an election. People would be coming to Kampala here and champion some sort of changes in, at the parliamentary level in terms of law, in terms of you know, other government policies that can bring about uh, that kind of change. But what I see is a very, of course, others will say, say it in another way. But the best way, to, of course, to say it is a state capture, not just parliament. We were in parliament. We are just coming out of parliament recently. And you see what happens in there does not give any citizen hope that there can come change from that side of hope. Of, of, <laughs> yes, you look at the military, you look at the, the police, you look at the judiciary, you look at, so which hope do we have, Gerald, in this generation 
to bring about this change that our teams um, that went ahead of us uh, were able to bring. When there is this kind of state, a hopelessness, you know, a helplessness, people now just do the reach of election year in, year out. Mm -hmm. But um, the benefits that come out of elections, mm -hmm. electing the people that you need to take forward your issues, that to result into the programs that you need, the interventions from government. I think for me, I don't want to say um, it is yet a, a hopeless state, but it is, uh, in, in, in th that is a fact. And I don't know where the help is going to come. And yet, we are the people to bring about that change. Mm -hmm. And hope, we shall find it. And give the hope to the <laughs> citizens. <laughs> so even as we discuss this, um, interesting topic. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Professor. <laughs> Where do we need to get this solution now? Because systematically, individually, if you try to raise your voice, you are cornered as an individual, mm -hmm. and in one way or another, you are silenced. The politicians know this very well, that if they do not silence you in another way, another way, somehow they will get to you mm -hmm. and try to weaken you, uh, uh, in, in economically, politically, and in other ways. Of course, we are victims of this. Because when you stand up for what you feel should be done, I remember in that conversation of the, the, the age limit uh, conversation, mm. that was an opportunity we had as a country to bring about some fundamental change <laughs> of some sort. But what happened after that can only tell you where we are headed for. And so. Even in the process. The processes, of course, mm. the processes, I can't even talk about them mm. here. Mm. And uh, mm. at the end of it all, the question is, where do we go from here? Maybe, that's maybe. why now we give it back to the citizens and say, okay, maybe um, there could be uh, other ways the public can engage. Because sometimes looking up to the politicians, mm. the leaders that are in, in position at that time, is not satisfactory. It isn't, because then... We have so much hope in them, but nothing is going to be translated into actual change that we want to see. So it's sometimes frustrating. Monica, you know, when you're an actor or actress on a stage, <laughs> uh, it is the, the audience that will best describe your performance. I, 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 and when, when you said, where, where can we find hope? My, for me, the biggest hope is, is the two examples seated next to us here. Mm. Monica and Gerald. Uh, the times that, that we saw politics. Mm. Politics was not the activity of your generation. You had to be somebody like me. With a bald head. Uh, maybe, I didn't know it maybe. was a bald. Oh, <laughs> you, you thought it was just a mirror. I think. Yeah. <laughs> or, or baby. So, yeah. So, 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 and, 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 and for, the, for this country and for, for even the generation all over the world, the hope for democracy is the consciousness of the young and their willingness to stand up yeah. and be counted. Regardless of how others may see the members of NOP, for example. Yeah. For me, I see it differently. I see a collective, a, a youth yeah. collective. Yeah that are prepared to stand up yes. and, and, and say, and shake the tables. This, this is our time, <laughs> yeah. the future is ours, yes. and we'll define it. And we have already reached yeah, yeah. there. Yes. And, and as long as you see that trend, it's a very positive trend. There will be setbacks, but like we used to say, this is a temporary setback that you are not in parliament now, <laughs> that you are not in parliament yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. That's but true. as long as you keep your eyes on the ball, yeah. 
time, I, I can assure you, time, time, time is, time is a very ruthless thing. Mm. Regardless of who you are, it keeps marching on. Mm. Mm. And, and the guys who, who, who think they can hold on to things, time is not on their side. Yeah. yeah. It, it is for their own good to recognize that and say, maybe it is time enough for us to seed space. You know, we, 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 in this country, we, we, we like to say that we are very religious, Christian, even at very high levels. And, and you know that the, the song that is, was the message from Jesus Christ that whatsoever you do to the least of my brother, mm. you do unto me. You do unto yeah. me. If you want to define how you are exercising the uh, democracy, you must define it by how the weakest participate and find space. But as long as he, you, you hold anybody else who doesn't agree with you as an enemy, mm -hmm. you are not democratic. You can do whatever you, you, you want to do. You can, you can make whatever claims you want to make. In the end, time will prove you wrong. Mm. And, and, and to me, I, I, I was... I was, I, I'm glad that I've, in the times that I came into politics, I've seen young people uh, come up, um, uh, fall, but dust their, their, their clothing and, and continue marching. And it's an extremely awful thing. So, Professor, just right there, because then you see, Sometimes we hear these in, in spaces of government, and they say, okay, with the introduction of possible malpartism, then they, they score on their card that, uh, yeah, the political rights and freedoms, yeah. of course, the political rights have, have been achieved, and there are spaces everyone can engage and freely. And we have a number their, of radios. You, you, uh, just, yes, you, you just imagine, you imagine, <laughs> you, you imagine a football match mm. where Arsenal is playing with Manchester United, and a Manchester fan or player is the referee. Mm. The outcome can never be equitable. If, if you think you are really democratic, why don't you let people make that judgment? Oh. During campaigns, mm. in the elections, mm -hmm. in the parliament, in, parliament, <laughs> in the judiciary, and in civil society, civil, yeah, yes. civil space. Hmm. If they if they are going to talk mm -hmm. and, and say it, and you are worried, and they will say. there is nothing that you need to know for you to actually recognize that you are not being democratic. You know, our neighbors, Kenya. Uh, Sarah so knows better the kind of things that civil society does yes. the, the level to, of to, 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 to further the common interest, mm -hmm. the common political and social interest of the people, puts to shame politicians. And, and if you now see Kenyans begin to talk to one another, it is that pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we yeah. need, instead of locking these people in, they're, they're, the, the, the best instrument, the, the best thermometer to know whether you are about to burn. Because when you lock them in, the day you, you burn out, you will not even know you are burning out. And it will be too late. Allow them that space. Recognize the things they say. And be honest about your response to those. You can, I mean, you cannot deceive truth. Yeah, because, uh, Professor, because now we are, we are seeing situations where uh, there, there is uh, 
political participation, all parties joining into, into elections, and uh, that sanitizes the elections each, each passing year. Because that, that is the, the card that uh, possibly the government uses. IPod. It will, it will, yes, there's iPod and all of them participate in the elections. Uh, of course, there are calls that come around and suggest that there should be boycott, but then we see people really, that is really taking... No, the, a, you know, the, the, the issue of the this... The outcomes at the end of the day... The issue of that participation is election, in election is what Gerald said from the beginning. Oh. Hope. Oh. You know, those... Some of us witness Uganda under Idi Amin. And somebody is coming to be arrested. He puts up in, in, in the expectation that the people coming to arrest him or her are rational enough and they will not kill him instead of running away. And many people die. And, 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 and so what, what you are really seeing, <laughs> people going back to, to participate in elections, is that hope that maybe one day this, this, the, this, the these guys will, will wake count. up yeah. and recognize that what we are doing is not enmity, what we are doing is the imperative of democracy, what we are doing can only take all of us forward. <laughs> when we do it right. Mm. And, and until, until uh, the other parties to this process recognize that, it's going to be a challenge. But participation is the hope that we must express. Yeah. Uh, I know you, uh, we're going to, 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 to make a rejoinder. Mm. But in there, they, we need to, to, to respond to the fact that Uganda has never experienced any peaceful transfer of power. Mm. Yeah, and we've seen it over the years. Yes. So we're asking, well, what could be, where is the problem as a country? Mm -hmm. So as you're responding to, to, to that, you can also uh, you know, share your thoughts. Elections. If, I, if you want to study the word election, I think it, 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 it simply comes from the word elect, mm -hmm. to choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if, if you take away that aspect of humanity from choosing and choosing one of the most critical things they are leaders you have really really affected them greatly now elections are critical you imagine what happened in the previous election here in central region mm. you imagine it happened in the three quarters of this country. Mm. Yeah? I'm not saying it happened in 90%, uh, just 75%, or 70%, mm. or even 60% of this country. Mm. Chances are that we would be having a different conversation now. Mm. Mm. If at all we are conversing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> because we, we may be doing <laughs> other things completely. <laughs> status quo, the regime has been so hard, working so hard, to make sure that increasingly people lose hope, lose interest in this process. Mm. So they, they, then they can have it as they want it. Mm. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting, but when you think about um, the, the, younger, the younger people uh, participating, uh, showing up uh, present themselves for, for political uh, leadership. Mm. First, uh, the numbers actually, even amidst this drama, the numbers keep increasing. Oh, yes. mm. So the, the parliaments keep getting <coughs> younger. And, so if and the proportion uh, keeps moving against the old guys. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, so it means we that even the amidst, now. amidst the, 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 the so much effort and resources, the machinery, the state machinery, that, that we see in, in elections and during, before, and even the very day of the election, against all the odds, increasingly you see people still saying, no, we can't afford to lose hope because this is our country. Mm. So they still push their way. They still have hope. So I, I think 
we may be having a very difficult situation right now. Mm. But sometimes, you, you know, you have to hit the bottom before you come up. Yeah, yeah. yeah and once you hit the bottom, I mean, you Quite can good. already come up. You can already come up. <laughs> so so it, it appears we are there. Mm. And, and, and naturally, we have no choice mm. but, but to find up. ways of <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. uh, you know, we have, um, talking about the, 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 the no peaceful transition, it is sad. I mean, you would want to think 20, 2021. <laughs> mm that you still have a country mm -hmm. in 2021 yeah. that has had m independence for over 60 years. Yes, yeah. And that country has not seen a peaceful transition. By the way, we also need to examine this. Mm. We've had nine leaders. We have had nine transfers of power mm. since independence. Mm. None of them has happened peacefully. Mm. Mm. But among these 60 and years, none of them uh, Really transfer. <laughs> 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 capture. <laughs> 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 this is capture. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. But but also let's further examine it. <laughs> the, the the sixty years. Yeah. I think one man has had more than half of them. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One 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 mm. man. Mm. Yeah. And what is unfortunate, he still thinks he can go on. Yeah, <laughs> that, he, that he can go on, he's the only one. And, and you see, for me, I, you know, I hail from Mutungam. When, in the last election, I was at Harare, and one, one, one lady, one old lady, I said, Gerald, you've been so helpful. You know, you, you, in some places where we thought we'd never see tap water, we now have it. You have had so many projects. But we see, on the one hand, we are so appreciative. On the other hand, there are people who are really fighting you. And we may actually lose you. So don't you think you should consider remaining with us? And maybe you can actually be part of those who are really fighting you. So that you remain with us. Ah. And then I listened. Now, my interest was. Why don't you join me? Yes, that's <laughs> precisely what she was saying. My interest was to listen to the majority of the people who are there, who are there are. Mm. What was the reaction to, to, towards what she was saying? And so as she spoke, as she was concluding, I kept uh, my eyes now mm. on the audience. Mm. What was interesting was seeing the number of heads that were shaking, nodding, holza nodding horizontally, that were, were and, and, not, and, not, and not vertical, who were actually, I think out of 10, I could easily say seven were disagreeing with her position. Mm. Now for me, that, that indicated that the people out there, yes, they want the quick interventions, but they also want to see their country on the right trajectory. Mm. Because they know the future can be very blink, even these little things that we are seeing right now. So the traditionally, um, you know, Kaodang, <laughs> you, have a, you have an agriculturist here, a practitioner. <laughs> you know, the, the, if you were walking around and you see Kaodang, it looks very dry on top. Mm. Most of the times, mm -hmm. it's very, very dry. <laughs> 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 but if you step but on you it, just need to step on it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be lucky not to you fall. Really <laughs> realize that, oh my God! <laughs> 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 Bless so, you. So, like so, so, so the situation in our country is just like that. Um, wow. There is so much of window dressing, mm. so much of sugar coating, mm. so much of it's so cosmetic. Yeah. That you can think we are really democratic. That you even people say, oh, but you people choose Why your I leaders. Mm. Parliament, you know, you know, mm. parliament almost changes almost about seventy percent every yeah. year, yes. mm. every term, <laughs> and yeah. every term. Absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you you can very easily, but we need to to keep us with this hindsight of how do we arrive at all this? You have a whole set of machinery that keeps working towards this impression, but takes away the very aspect of real democracy. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, that's where we need to go. We need to keep driving the people and say, look, what we are seeing is, 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 is basically so much effort to take away our hope, take away our energies, to, give, to get us resigned. Mm. Hmm? Actually, it is resigned Yes, to now. get us resigned. Mm. 
And that, and that's the, 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 I think the regime has always been hoping for that moment where they can... But it will not come. Yes, I don't think it will come. <laughs> <laughs> it will not come. Not come. You know, we're ready here. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm here is that the money. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 we can. We are no, I think we are let, not. Let others are picking. But we have okay. fully resigned. Others no. are picking. No, you know, I think oh, we have resigned. No. If you see what happened in the election. You see, my honorable. P they, they, people have become uh, very cynical. Mm. Yes. Mm. But in that cynicism, the greatest fear must come from those who think people have resigned. Yes. Yeah. They have not. Because people have not resigned, but uh, the little room to forgive mm. keeps yes. dissipating, and that is my big worry. Because there must be that room when, when change comes, we'll say, ah, after all, we have got the change. Yes. Mm. People will not be satisfied with change alone. They will want, they want, they want like, like we say, Congo week, you know, to, to knock the head mm. yes. of the, the guy who did it, so just to remind him that you, <laughs> what did you think? Yes. And we don't need to reach that no, stage. No. You call it Congo week? We don't. We don't. Yeah, yeah, Congo week. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need to reach that stage because. <laughs> this country mm. is, is, is more than enough for all of us. Yeah. Mm. If only we but, could uh, recognize that. Honorable yeah. colleagues, if, mm. if you look at the situation that pertains now, because I see uh, efforts even to present to this country, you know, some sort of inherited leadership. And right now there are groups which are boldly taking action mm. in terms of fronting a certain narrative of uh, a transition from one place to from one person to another in the and same I, place, in the same place. and i don't seem to see any action this, this from the public or even comments and you know and this, in my view <laughs> i feel yeah. there is the, the the state has succeeded in uh, creating this sort of resignation in you know so Among us, the people, so to the extent yes, that... Yes, sooner. We just share this briefly. You know, you, you, can, you can actually very easily uh, 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 say that, yes, Ugandans have given up. Hmm? You can actually say that. But, you know what gives me hope, and where really there is really hope? Things have happened in this world, you know, and... and History, history tells us so much that people who turn around the situation again, they, they, you don't have to have all the 40 million on one day, wake up one morning and choose to take a course of action. And, and, and if you really study almost every case, you look at ANC in South Africa. I, I, I had no idea until I really studied ANC. It was a party of about 100 years old. Mm -hmm. So even when before the Mandela's came in, the party was actually there. Go so back. until there was a group of young leaders say, but wait a minute, I think we need to change a course of action now. Mm. And we really take this to another level. And, they, and, and the country agreed with them, and they moved in that direction. Unfortunately, it took slightly longer than they had thought, mm. but eventually they got there. So I, I think the hope... The fact that we, we, we still have people still, <laughs> we are still thinking that there is hope. Mm. <laughs> and some, yes, that alone can, can be, you know, um, John F. Kennedy, I think, was speaking to South African students in 1963, and he said that, uh, that every time an individual sets out, and he didn't, he didn't say many people, said an individual sets out, Actually, this was Robert Kennedy, the younger brother to John F. Kennedy. Um, an individual sets out to help a lot of others. He sets forth a tiny rip of hope. Mm -hmm. And when it crisscrosses, it builds mm -hmm. an amount of energy mm -hmm. that can bring down the mightiest walls of mm -hmm. oppression and suffering. Yeah. So, so, so sometimes, I mean, even in our case, these fellows were 20 something, they say. So, you know, <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it's not all done. Mm. There are Ugandans who still mm. believe. And, and honorable, I'm very sure, out there, every time, and, and I see this almost every single day, you will meet a fellow on the street, you'll go to the market, you'll meet some lady, you'll meet 
and they will say, they will say and if they say they follow very close what's happening, they say, we know you did not come back to parliament. And we actually know how you do. And you are wondering, this, where did she even? But thank you. We know what you are doing. We know what you've been doing. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. This is our country. Mm -hmm. So there is still a ray, and actually a big ray of hope. Because these fellows have hit the bottom anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable. I, I think we are, we are having a, a very short break. Well, let's leave uh, our viewers to make a little reflection on that and yes. see whether they still have hope. Then we return back for, <laughs> after this short break. Kindly uh, get us, we shall get back after the short break. Thank you. Uh, welcome back from that short break and of course uh, we are still uh, doing a reflection on our democratic journey uh, as a country Uganda and uh, joined on the panel of, uh, of, of course is uh, Honorable Gerard, uh, very familiar face and all of us know him, uh, Sarah Birete, a regular panelist, mm -hmm. Sarah you're welcome also. Uh, Professor Latigo and uh, Honorable uh, mm -hmm. Monica. These are very familiar faces and uh, of course we've been having a very interesting conversation and I hope you're following on there on uh, YouTube, of course Civic Space TV. We are on, on our, our Twitter hashtag ChatShowUG but DemocracyUG uh, hashtag is also running for this Democracy Week. Uh, please be part of this conversation, share your thoughts. Let's go back to, to, to the debate itself. Uh, Sarah, you had something you wanted to, 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 to interject, or you, you make a, a supplement, or, or uh, I don't know, but uh, submission. a submission. Yes, but be, before, the yeah, you maybe. Yeah, before, bef before then, uh, let's, let's uh, understand, how would you score the implementation of the doctrine of separation of power in Uganda, and why? As you're making your rejoinder, you could also try to respond to that. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to, you know, make a small rejoinder to what Tony Bokaranga was saying on uh, the cosmetic packaging of Uganda as a democratic and progressive country, and which many people, especially in the international community, have bought into. If you look through, you know, on the first surface, surface mm -hmm. You see progressive elite, like the people seated in this room, <laughs> you know, looking very nice, speaking good English. <laughs> so, <it's like> <laughs> <laughs> Some of them driving not so bad cars. So when you look at, and I know the regime normally, you know, like Uses this it. narrative of so many mushrooming houses. Yes, yes. So many vehicles now, we, we can no longer fit on our roads. So you are on a road going into a small distance that should be 10 minutes, but you take three hours because of traffic jam. You know, and then if everybody going to school and the people are no longer in the, in the towns, children are no longer, you know, bare footed. So, and, and, and when you go back to the earlier speeches of President Museveni, when he used to say that African leaders are pathetic, are a problem, and some people fly in choppers, buy private jets, mm -hmm. flying over poor and hungry people. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so, but I, and I even don't know how many jets we have because it's not one, mm -hmm. the private jets. Maybe the MPs know the number. <laughs> it is not one. We still have... Uh, even the jiggers in my district of Shani, I have seen reports, yes, that there are jiggers in a sub county called the Chamunga, a jigger pandemic in Bushani. So even people who used to say jiggers are in Busoga, <laughs> now they are coming in Western Uganda. I see reports of malnutrition mm -hmm. from Bushani, yeah. which used to be a model district, mm -hmm. where uh, uh, more than 70% uh, of people have registered land. Uh, and that is security, that, that is collateral that they can, but there is malnutrition in Bushen. Mm -hmm. So to me, if these issues have reached Bushen, my home district, which used to be a model, which used to be admired by everybody, and it goes back to my earlier question, where is this progress? So you have a district at independence, 
post-independence regarded as a model, but is now making headlines of malnutrition and jiggers. So is that progress? Is that the road to Canaan or the road to Damascus? Yeah. So, but, <laughs> We are already but, in Damascus. <laughs> 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 but, but going back to your question of the doctrine of separation of powers, you know, the uh, governments have three arms of the executive, legislature, and, and the judiciary. Mm. And uh, for this doctrine to function, there must be mutual respect and the mutual interdependence of these arms of government. Mm. And synergy. Yes. So, and, and the purpose is simple, that whatever decisions executive takes, then they are subject to approval of mm. parliament, mm. and they can be checked mm. in the, by, the, by the judiciary. judiciary. Mm -hmm. It's like the, but, uh, the, there's some law that the judiciary, uh, uh, no, the right of the Bank of Uganda to... Yes, to yes. close the accounts, the accounts Bank yeah. of Uganda and Financial Intelligence yes. Authority. The <laughs> Constitutional Court has just outlawed yes. Section yes. 118 of mm. the anti money laundering Act. Mm. Yeah, or, or they just arbitra them. closing the banks books, yeah. arbitrarily without and, and that, going that, through courts. That is what we want yes, to see. Yes, the due process. Yeah. So once you have these arms functioning well, then there is no arm that can overrun the other. Mm. Then there are no excesses. Mm. Then there are no abuses. For example, let me use a, a particular example that is really thrown in our democracy, the abuse of rights by, by security agencies. Security agencies that are praised as professional abroad, professional disciplined. Mm -hmm. If you talk about UPDF in Somalia, they are like next to Messiah. Mm -hmm. Very professional, mm -hmm. very disciplined, mm -hmm. very ethical. Mm -hmm. When you, you know, and other areas where they've served in peacekeeping missions. Mm -hmm. But when you come back home, mm -hmm. I don't know whether you can get such comments and mm -hmm. feedback and mm -hmm. reviews. I doubt that you can, unless you're on one side of the political, of the political stride, you cannot. So th these are the challenges that we have. Then when you weaken parliament and other institutions of governance mm -hmm. that are supposed to help check the excesses and ensure that everybody's rights are protected. Mm -hmm. So one, you take away the, the security agencies, they serve one individual, they serve one party. I do not think that, like we've seen in elections, mm. that an opposition leader can call on police and say, I'm here. <laughs> if police responded, and, and you can go back and you are put on Katevi. And, and that, and For that, doing the right thing. Yeah. We have just seen a, a, an all seen massacre who interfaced with the Committee of Defense. Mm. Mm. On Masaka Kingsland was arrested <laughs> for doing his work. Mm. Because the Constitution provides that committees of parliament have powers of high court mm. and can summon anybody. Mm. Mm. And you are supposed to answer their questions mm. Mm. without telling lies. So an OC interfaces with the Committee of Defense. Of course, we also saw a minister who tried to block mm -hmm. the Committee of Defense. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most immediate demonstration of lack of separation of powers mm -hmm. and the mutual respect, mutual connectedness, and harmony and, and, in and, work. And the real character of yes, our Yes, uh, and being responsive <laughs> and accountable <laughs> and answerable. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, really, that was just a, a short skit mm -hmm. that demonstrated the arrogance of power led by the General Muhwezi, mm -hmm. who even had no shame, because he should have acted behind the camera, at least with that arrogance. Mm -hmm. But he even had the guts of looking into the cameras and say we are government, mm -hmm. thinking that executive is government, forgetting mm -hmm. that parliament is also government. Mm -hmm. So that really is a demonstration of the mm -hmm. abuse and arrogance Separation of power. Of powers. Yes. Uh, wow. let, me, let me get to <laughs> the Honorable uh, Mama, <laughs> Monica. First of all, you're even part of uh, the people I think that were, were, were squeezed in during the. the <laughs> I don't believe it. Well, <laughs> it was, a worthy it was uh, yeah, um, yeah um, that experience was a good one. Mm. Um, I come from uh, the background, of course, of having worked uh, within NRM. 
uh, party because I joined it when I was with uh, Karuhanga. Uh, before, no, 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 just recently when uh, we were in youth politics. Mm. But even then, initially, actually, I loved um, what was going on because mm. I thought that there was some bit of uh, progressive, you know, discussions that were going on in NRM in terms of uh, people power, you know, people power at that time. And so <laughs> now I have difficulty um, pinpointing to some of those Principal. principles that I can hold on to, to say that my party has been progressive in this direction. And so we thought by being in there would give us an opportunity to have a conversation internally mm -hmm. with the systems and perhaps create, you know, that understanding of, you know, um, a progressive human rights, uh, you know, and governance principles being applied. But of course, there is no such space there. That space has long gone. And uh, when you try to raise these kind of issues internally, then you're seen as an enemy from within. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were frantically fought and uh, disorganized. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, we, we kept being there and we thought that we are there for a purpose and a reason. And if I have a chance to get back, I'll get back in that. Yes, because we still have work to do mm. within the system. That's why you were seeing that there was an, a good number of rebels, so-called, <laughs> we called ourselves liberal, the liberal NRM is in, within the party. And of course, I think there's still space for it. So uh, we, we need such people to be in there to have a conversation on these issues, separation of powers, were well, a minister. Uh, when you are in there, maybe a quick question, Mureta. Mm. When you are in there, mm. in that space, are you talking to yourself? Is there somebody listening? And is there evidence of that listening? <laughs> the listening is a different <laughs> thing. <laughs> but the talking will always be there because there are opportunities mm. to raise these concerns mm. in the focuses, in committees. Mm. And you challenge internally what is happening, what is going on. You put the ministers to check. You know, we've done all this frantically in parliament in different spaces. And um, like you said, well, we kept going because Ugandans still had hope that there are a few people in that parliament that can still have this conversation going on. So at, at the moment where we are, I don't think there is such hope anymore because I see an increased, you know, uh, union of, of all these uh, systems. The judiciary, I don't even want to talk about the judiciary now. <laughs> I'm careful to talk about it. What I see, of course, is that the, the political cases, those, is, it's as if it's a no-go area for the system to, to adjudicate over. Well, you may get some seamless of, you know, response in terms of the, the basic human rights and other civil cases and all that. I don't want to have that conversation because it might be uh, a conflict of interest here and there. However, what Sarah notes is the grim reality. And it, it, the space is, is reducing day by day because we don't seem to see any checks and balances now differentiating between the presidency. And uh, I, I would give an example of my bill, the sexual offenses bill recently. It was uh, not assented to by the president. It was returned to the parliament. And now the conversations have to be between the president and the committee. The checks and balances are going back and forth. The lawmaking body is parliament. The presidency cannot make law. The law is made by parliament by virtue of being a place where there are representatives of the people and therefore, they have that mandate, that role, that duty to make the law on behalf of the people. But now when you have to leave a decision regarding a law to be implemented in Uganda to be made by one person at the end of the day, when it has been made by 500 legislators, then it ceases to have relevance. Parliament may be uh, incrementally losing its relevance even in lawmaking and also other, other examples that you note. The judiciary... The other state agencies, if orders are not coming from somewhere, they are coming from the state mafias, because I think those ones have captured more power than the presidency itself, because they are those who are well-positioned. They are the ones who actually are cracking the deals. 
They are the ones who issue instructions to the ministers. They are the ones who determine what is going on about. Very few people making decisions. I think actually it is no longer the three arms of government. For me, I think it's now power is located somewhere else and there are some few people calling the shots. Ah, that is the right word, the yeah. deep state of Uganda and also others outside. So for me, as I started earlier on, I think I need an extra intervention, a fourth arm. <laughs> divine. <laughs> divine. <laughs> we need a divine <laughs> arm <Professor> to, <laughs> to <laughs> intervene and give people hope. And mm -hmm. I think that is where I come from, the religious fraternity as mm. well. So I think we need a lot more mm. than we need divine intervention mm. in some. Uh, Professor, I think we will reserve national prayers. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, this, this, is, this, this matters are really of Caesar. And uh, we have to deal with it in those terms. Mm. Uh, we keep going out of it. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you know. Fundamentally, uh, if you turn to God and and folded your arms, uh, God will not will not do the Calm things that now. you must do, yeah. because God has mandated you already with the mind, with the body, with the feeling to to define and. <coughs> You know, too many times we, we focus, I, I, I focus differently, too many times we focus on our faith. Mm -hmm. and, and we forget that embedded in this faith of ours is also the faith of those who are doing the things that make us feel very despondent. Mm, of course. Yeah. I saw most of them running out of the country towards elections. So, so <laughs> I have I've reached where they are I, more insecure. I, I, I've reached where I am no longer sympath uh, sympathetic with myself. Mm. I'm actually sympathetic with them. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ger Ger General talked about what happened to him in in, in Tungam. In my case, after the nomination, and a returning officer starts calling me, regardless of my status and age, late at night, sending me text messages. You have to send money. Wow. Uh, you drive to Kiriandongo. To do what? That he, he needs money from me. When I uh, compile all those, then I, I told is 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 registrar. Mm -hmm. I sent a few of the things, and I said, you know, this man needs help because he knows who I am and what he's doing. I have all this evidence. I could walk to the electoral commission and get him to lose his job. So talk to him. But. You know, instead of focusing on that guy, what I decided, I came to Kampala. I had, I had some money I'd saved for election. I, I called the guys who can do terrazzo, and I, and I said, you come. And I started doing terrazzo in, on, on my veranda, on my walkways. <laughs> and, and the guys were calling me and said, but you're not coming for the campaign. I said, no, I, it is OK. Mm. And I, I went the last three weeks because my immediate conclusion was that this guy must, the way the guy was so blindly confident, mm. they must have a way of, of, of manipulating the elections. Mm. Mm. And uh, instead of being angry with him, I just felt sorry. Mm. And I said, if, I, if I, I went there, you know, you know, the guys in the electoral commission, they know me as a person. Mm. I, and had all this evidence on my phone. And I said, this is the price you have to pay for, for being who you are, yeah, knowing yeah. that yeah. this country, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so uh, I did my own things. I didn't win the election. I was glad I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it gives me uh, 
the, 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 the freedom to speak as an outsider. Mm -hmm. I have no vested interests mm -hmm. in this thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I can now go back to my own people and tell them, ask them, where, where is that 100,000 you were given in your LCs? Mm -hmm. Where is it now? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Is that what you want? Let me, Professor, let me also get you uh, back to, to this question. You see, democratic governance has seven pillars. We have uh, legitimacy, we have participation, we have responsiveness, we have ethics, transparency, we have, of course, predictab uh, predictability and accountability. Yeah. So I'm trying to understand where do we stand against these principles. You, you know, as an ecologist, we, we have a field where we call uh, key factor analysis. Mm -hmm. You can have seven factors. At any one moment, only one factor is important. Right now, all these other elements that you have described are not important. The most important element now is to, is to do everything to make President Museveni and the people around him who think they have arrived and they will go nowhere to realize that they are living in illusion. And that, if they continue in that path, they will be the greatest victims of what they call their own successes. Mm. And the sooner they wake up, the better for them. But it will also be good for the whole country. And for me, that is now the only thing that must be hammered without fear or favor. If I met the president face to face, I would tell him. If I'm on television like this, I'll tell you. Because let him not delude himself. Mm -hmm. It's not God. Mm -hmm. It's just an ordinary mortal mm -hmm. who is now beginning to be a victim of his own success. He needs to be helped. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, uh, Honorable Gerard, you want to, to add on that? Or <laughs> you know, s sending a message to this government reminds me um, of a youth, an International Youth Day celebration mm. in Kawa. Uh, uh, the in first one you had. I think that was the third. Mm -hmm. That was in 2013 or 14. And in the stadium, first uh, the day before the, the function, I'm called by the youth minister to avail my speech. As a youth, regional. <laughs> as a youth MP, <laughs> <laughs> regional said, MP, <laughs> said, as a youth Western region. He said, "Okay, um, I I have it in my head. <laughs> so <laughs> do you want to take my head?" <laughs> and I thought he was joking. Then he called again after one hour. So they had deployed, of course. Uh, President is coming the following day. Security over the place. So at about 7 p.m., the, the minister now looks for me, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then, he, then eventually, so I tell him, I don't have any, Yes, I was in cover. I told him I don't have anything written. Mm -hmm. But what, you are going to speak to So he says, okay, you tell me what are you going to say. <laughs> 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 so, and then I, I said, okay, um, I mean, this is an international youth day. There are these issues. <laughs> you know them, unemployment, mm -hmm. governance issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, he was, so I, I could tell that he was getting pressure from somewhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. He really wanted to know. <laughs> so, and then uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I realized there was a problem. So I said, no, 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 there's no problem. We're going to have a function the following day. Um, so the short of it the following day, so, even when PGB was over the place, and you know when PGB is around, then you think now it's what? It's special forces now, SFC. <clears throat> then you know who's coming. Mm. Um, then uh, morning, the minister says, the, the vice president is coming and it could be your cause. And I said, how is that my cause of the vice president coming here? Mm. He said, you will understand it. Mm. I didn't mind. Mm. I said, okay. So I we the it function comes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, uh, um, Honorable Secretary shows up, and then 
So I'm called. <laughs> so I'm called to uh, to, to address uh, the youth in the stadium before <laughs> before he speaks. And I had one message. I, I knew there were youth issues. We had talked. Everyone had spoken about them. Unemployment, um, miseducation. And then I said, um, but there's one thing. After 30 years in our laws of Uganda, you cease to be a youth. So the president was going to make 30 years in power then, come 2016. And I said, please, vice president, the youth of this country. Now, I really, at that point, I assumed really almost all the youth really were saying this. <laughs> what is he saying? Have a message that surely, in you, gather all the courage you can to take the president. Because we really wanted to tell him straight here. That now that he has made 30 years in power, just like the youth ceased to be youth, let him also, let him also retire peacefully, give this country a gift that we've never seen, have a democratic, peaceful transition mm -hmm. from one day to another. Now, what I had not imagined was the reaction from the stadium, oh. the people. Uh -huh. They literally celebrated like for five minutes. <laughs> they were so loud <laughs> that I, I could tell that this had really destabilized the, 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 whole, the whole arrangement. Now, the unfortunate bit that Come we on. came out of that day, and, and, and I think this is where my point is. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I didn't, yeah, I think she I didn't was attend that one. Didn't attend. Yeah. It's probably not even mm. So, what shocked me, the journalists, come to me, uh, those who are from the state media, he said, yeah, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. We're already being threatened to lose our jobs. Why? You cannot report what you said. Mm. No. Mm. I didn't know it was running live what? on UBC oh, among oh. others. Oh my. <laughs> that was bizarre. And then today. they said, so we have, we have a real problem. Because we, even before we even leave this place, we are being, uh, and I said, for heaven's, for heaven's sake, Mute. how did you know what I was, how could you have imagined what I was going to say? Mm -hmm. And, but you see, that for me was an eptom, was a clear example of how the democratic space we are talking about not there, has kept dwindling over time. Yeah. That you could even threaten a journalist mm -hmm. for doing exactly what he was or she was doing. That her own job, her own her own livelihood, her source of food mm. and school fees for her children mm -hmm. was at stake mm -hmm. because she ought to have imagined what Karanga was about to say. And cut off. Eh? Yes, and cut off. <laughs> you can imagine. So, so the space that we are talking about, the democracy that we are talking about, the, the role of the fourth estate, because it's critical, very, very critical. Mm -hmm. Because we can have views. If these views are not shared, mm -hmm. then they can remain our individual views. Yeah. The, the way that uh, uh, the regime, and, and, and there are two aspects the regime has been engaged in. Initially, it used to be very radical. It would go um, forcefully, very with lots of... Uh, Just shut you out. Yeah, they, they, they will beat people up, mm -hmm. they will lock them up. Mm -hmm. Now, they are a bit sophisticated. So they will use resources. Yeah. So if they can't um, get it covered, because they know um, that this is going to have an impact, they know what Sarah is likely to say. So <laughs> then <laughs> they will make. Um, they will try as much as they can. I mean, they are, you, you can't believe that there are colleagues, political players in this country that cannot appear on certain media. Mm. Platforms. Absolutely. They will not be invited. Mm. Will not be invited. Mm -hmm. And and not because the media house doesn't want to invite them, mm. but that's directly from the state. Mm. Mm. But on the face of it, they say, ah, you can go on, on any of these televisions mm. and say what you want. Mm. Mm. But wait a minute. If so and so and so and so and so and, and so there. cannot go there, then you can't say that I can go there and say what I want when you even on the face of it you have restricted it to certain people. Mm. Yeah? That they are certain. So so we need to also interrogate what's going on, especially the sophisticated 
approach mm. that now the regime is using mm. that he seems not to be uh, uh, because on the, again on the face of it all will look well when people are acting in very sophisticated ways mm. yeah because they will not be seen to be radical uh, then they will they will say the radical aspects are isolated cases and eh? they mm. say this one and that one but then they do it in a very subtle way that um you cannot be hosted. Admonishing those who are abusing the rights of people. Some of the politicians. I think that was one of those very good drama uh, pieces that, <laughs> that I. <laughs> I mean, a few months ago, you were ordering a prize in power shooting. People mm. bystanders, mm. killing them, them. Mm. and even promoted them, praised them. Mm. Then the following, just a few months away, they're saying, oh, we respect human blame. rights. Mm. We do. Because this has become a question of mm. this regime. Yeah. Unfortunately, this regime is going to be remembered for very many terrible things. Mm. Very many terrible things. Because history, history never disappears. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah? Mm -hmm. I know <laughs> you are not. Yeah, so I, 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 think so I, 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 I agree with you. The solutions that are being said by Professor Kiza and Ena and Dokarama. I, I just want to add that among the key, because the Professor Kiza did say that he picked on the key issue. Mm. I think the biggest threat to we have is the crisis of the truth matter, which was your. Mm. Mm. So when you organize an election, which is mandated by the constitution, and uh, you decide to participate alone, and mm. suffocate the ability, mm. and, and even the people, because by the, by the time uh, the, the Secretary of the Commission was fired, and they were published and other senior officials, President Museven was already gazetted as an inherent flag bearer. So you have a presidential candidate. Who can still fire? Firing <laughs> and hire. Election mm. officials. Mm. And, 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 and there are no election commissioners. For about a month, mm. with ah. the chairman saying, no, they have resigned. Oh, oh, oh. He's not talking with the grass in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> In the, well, in the field, in the yes. Field with the Manchester versus Arsenal. And then they, when the whistle is about to blow to start the game, hmm? to fire the ref. <laughs> <laughs> and you put yours. And fire the ref. And put, <laughs> and put one of their players <laughs> at the ref. Ah. So should Arsenal stay in the, in the field <laughs> or the game is over? Ah. Can be suspended. Yeah, mm. the other example is also the way you know toward the elections in February before COVID the pandemic broke out. Mm. We had the beautiful ruling of the constitutional court outlawing section eight of the Public Order Management Act. Mm. As we were beginning to celebrate the same thing. COVID broke mm. and they, it became an opportunity yeah. for the state as go ah. mm. suppress mm. Wow. the political rights. So in our case, COVID also changed the goalposts. <coughs> in that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. case, mm -hmm. where you have appointed one of your team players as a ref, mm -hmm. so COVID changed the goalposts. So co COVID extended the, the goalposts of opposition mm -hmm. to make sure the goalkeeper cannot in any way. <laughs> Three times <laughs> larger. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you are the best diver. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But even with that extension by COVID, mm -hmm. then the, the people now that were assumed to be neutral by the Constitution also further removed the other goalposts mm -hmm. from the one side. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, unfortunately, people me. can ask, but why do you continue to, in such exercise? Mm -hmm. I, I was asked, asked that question by Shaka said, why are you to register to observe such an election? <laughs> So the question comes to participate or not mm. to participate. Yeah. Mm. 
So do we legitimize these fraudulent elections by our participation? Does boycott help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I think Ugandans participate in these elections for different reasons. As much as many people know the process is rigged, mm -hmm. still you want to continue, one, give hope mm -hmm. to those that are looking forward to yeah. a better normal country, mm -hmm. but also to continue to publicize your agenda for change and tell people we can, we can have a better country. And also ex and expose and the expose true nature mm -hmm. of... Exactly yeah. And mm -hmm. expose mm -hmm. as you mobilize people on your side. Mm. Okay. Mm. I think so. So, so I, I think I think uh, now our yeah. time is fast spent. Mm. We need to give our last fasting shots, mm. and uh, possibly I'll start with uh, yeah. Honourable Monica here. I'll give uh, each of you a minute. Yeah. Well, in my minute, reflecting on this discussion, I think I want to challenge Ugandans, mm. having come from that election which Sarah has just talked about, uh, participating at the forefront and seeing what exactly happened. Uh, even at parliamentary level, when I emerged, it's not because I lost that election, but the parameters which were, you know, guarding or, you know, within, within which we're supposed to, yeah, the operation that happened, it, it could not in a say allow anyone of my view or, you know, or thinking even to, to emerge victorious. Because when I look at Gerald's story, mine was another altogether, where a general just comes and declares and says, now, this one cannot go back to parliament. No matter how many votes she has got, she will yeah, not be declared. So in, in, in my view, the nine, this oh. last election, I think almost as, as, as buried, as, or oh, buried, I don't know, what we can call democracy per se, because all the, the indicators of democracy per se were not actually followed and the COVID regulations made it worse mm -hmm. because it, it, it gave them advantage to do whatever they wanted. And uh, having gone through those uh, very traumatic experiences in politics as well, but also in these elections, I want to throw the ball to the Ugandans because one time I made a comment on that and say that in one way, sometimes I want to challenge Ugandans with difficulty because the response you get sometimes can discourage you from telling them that the truth also is that some, some of the contribution that we have right now is Ugandans also being, a, a, which word can we use? Apathetic. Yeah. Apathetic is the word. Apathetic. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they watch the few politicians who are talking about these issues and leave them and give the hope or actually hope that those few <laughs> are going to bring about the desirable, you know, change yeah. in the country. And I was playing my games within the system and also watching my colleagues who were trying to do their engagement and activism outside that system. Of course, with a lot of difficulty, but the missing link is the people. Because in democracy itself, participation, active participation of the citizenry itself has to be felt. The, the excuse people will tell you is that um, we are preserving ourselves <laughs> to see the future. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we have gone into self-preservation. Mm. So now if you're in self-preservation and, you know, who is going to take lead? The future by you. And lead you to that future. Mm. And we leave it to a few, very, very few, hoping that the generals here and a few others there will take, you know, you to the promised canon. I don't think it can happen that easily. Mm. Everybody must sacrifice in their little way to see the future that we want. And so that is my parting shot. And I know this conversation is still going on beyond this. Mm. Yes. Maybe we'll get more opportunities to go you know, deeper into that perspective. What is the role of the citizen? Mm. That is an area where we need to interrogate further and challenge people to take center stage and get them to do their part because democracy entails all of us working together to achieve what we desire for our country, Uganda. But as it is now, we wait for politicians to mess up in whatever way they have. And then when they come back for the election, all of us have engaged in it. We've not talked about bribery, voter bribery, but that has been the centerpiece of our election. And majority of the politicians are engaged in it. Mm -hmm. Because if you do not 
appear to be um, a, a politician who can solve challenges and issues, provide for the citizens, for community problems, mm -hmm. then you are not a good leader. You cannot just talk, talk, talk. I don't know, Honorable Ogenga, how you were doing your politics, Gerald, whether you have not been working with the community. And this happens towards elections, the outage of programs, of government programs, increases because that is now the time to show <laughs> that this is a concerned government. Even on the side, Emioga, Emioga, I told my people, please don't hope about, you know, Emioga is not going to be anything that will materialize. Mm. But people kept forming groups and what? I said, this one, the same thing with the youth fund. Mm. <laughs> All those programs, we discouraged people and said, please have self-determination because these government programs <laughs> only continue to uh, disempower you and entrench, you know, that negative part of uh, these uh, uh, government uh, programs. But also on the, gov on the side of politicians, we also tend to do more of those programs towards elections. The outage of the number of activities we engage in is because the demand is coming from the people that you must engage, <laughs> you must do this to show that you, you know, you cannot simply talk like we are enjoying this talking here and you are considered a serious politician. So it is voter bribery and, you know, is deeply entrenched. And unfortunately, we vote leaders based on that. And when they come to parliament, then you are the ones who lose out. So mm. I want to challenge the citizens from that perspective, that it is also the ball also, you know, we have to engage and also, you know, challenge politicians, but also touch into ourselves <coughs> and see what kind of Uganda we want to see and also try to build that narrative in that direction. Mm. Thank yeah. you, uh, Honorable. Uh, professor? Well, I, like, uh, like I said earlier, I have, uh, have a lot of hope in, in what I see in terms of youth, youth participation in, in, in the politics of our country. Mm -hmm. And my prayers mm -hmm. is that some of us will, will still be there to guide them on how to use the opportunity that will emerge from their struggles and, and, and make it different from the one that we saw under the NRM. The other element which, which sometimes we don't, we ignore, is that life is relative. I mean, you can, you can deceive your household that everything is fine. Mm -hmm. But when the, when the neighbors are progressing and the household is not progressing, sooner or later you will have trouble. And, and when Kenya progresses, not only in terms of uh, democratization, but also economic progress, uh, the, the, you, we are talking about the number of cars. In Kenya, you will talk about the number of roads, four-lane roads, uh, the trains. When Tanzania is doing the same thing, when Rwanda is doing the same thing, sooner or later, people will, you will have nowhere to run. Uh, and and, and uh, Hopefully, South Sudan will, <laughs> will, will, will also stabilize. Uh, and so, my appeal <clears throat> is really to President Seven and people around him. You have done your part. There's, there's, there's no weakness in recognizing that you have done your part and that your time has, has come and you let it go. The rest, I can't blame Ugandans because they are victims. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Sarah. You know, I, I think I, I also want to address the students of this country and they say that the referent Article 1, which is the most misquoted and abused article of our constitution. Mm. Because the leaders conveniently say Court. power belongs to the people. Mm. But they never explain how that power belongs to the people. This is power that should be exercised in regional free and fair elections. And that article raised the standard of our elections, how leaders should be chosen, and how all authority of government emanates from, the, from people. the people. 
But the people have reduced a social contract to a grand auction. So at the level of, of, of parliament, there, there are two things. Generally, at, at the national level, there are two things through which now current leaders are deriving legitimacy from. <laughs> One is money, <laughs> second is violence. <laughs> and, uh, and in most cases, the two are combined, especially where the stakes are high. Mm -hmm. So when the people reduce this enormous power of a social, of, you know, bargaining, they making a bargain for a social contract, for very cheap bargain, you know, most times people, they are, people are not even given more than 10,000 shillings. Mm, yeah. And for 10,000 shillings, you sell your power for five years. You sell your country. For people who should not be your leaders. Just divide, divide the 10,000 Five, the five, five years. days in five years. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 I read cents. <laughs> <laughs> no sense. I don't know what to cut. <laughs> 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 the name Yeah, very little money. Mm. Because we are at most 10,000 mm. shillings. At most, and on the basic needs, can carry you for two days. I don't think that it can go beyond that. Why? Because making 1,000 shillings. I know, 500. There's a time when somebody was distributing 500 shillings in Bishen. That's why I say that most 10,000. But also we have seen people where also some areas where people also bribe in a massive, you know, somebody's calculating amounts, in amounts mm. uh, 200,000 per circle. By the time you finish villages, it's right a lot there. of money. Mm. Mm. But the bottom line is it does not matter how much money these people are. Mm. The, the, the political entrepreneurs. So the political entrepreneurship that we have allowed in our yeah. elections is illegal, mm -hmm. is fraudulent, it's and immoral. will never yeah. moral, criminal, and will never deliver mm -hmm. what the democracy is intended to achieve. Absolutely. It will never. Mm -hmm. So the, it is high time for people to, to wake up, mm -hmm. stop selling themselves so cheap. cheap. And, and rescue their country. Mm. Thank you very much, Sarah. Then uh, finally, the Honorable Gerard. Yeah, um, you know, there is a saying, um, I'm trying to find a way of putting it in, uh, in this other Queen's language. Um, that, you know, we have a culture of sharing animals. So if I give you a goat, uh, you know, after some time, you should also give me one or give to my child or something like that. And it's, it almost cuts across most of the African tribes. And then, but when, so the saying goes that when it is purchased, please don't expect a return. <laughs> so, so <laughs> this election that we've um, also allowed to go on for purchase for a long mm. time, because now large mm. democracy has become, yeah, purchase. yeah it's, it's mm. a business. For, yeah. So the, 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 uh, the democracy in our context has become more or less a business. Mm. And... And, and the moment we, we really kind of let that be the norm, that be the norm, you know, the people these days talk about the how COVID has changed so many things. The so the new normal. <laughs> if we also allow <laughs> the, 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 the political uh, uh, election purchase become the, the norm, mm. then we shall certainly pay for it as we've already seen. Mm. Now, but there is still a lot and a lot of hope in this country. Why? Because the people out there, the challenges that they face, and, and you can listen to them. You see, sometimes back we used to hear people say, whenever something happened, they say, government at Uyambe. Now, on one hand, you would think, these people, can they do something about whatever is happening for themselves? But on the other hand, when you internalize it, it also communicates that people appreciate that government has responsibility. That um, irrespective of, 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 of what they have to do as individuals, but the leaders have to deliver on their mandate. Mm. They have to deliver on their promise. Now, that means that then all of us, we have to begin waking up mm -hmm. and realize that we really need very objective people in positions of leadership. 
the, the, the challenge that we've been facing and which is really threatening us is the, the increasing syndrome of getting professionals, objective people, serious uh, mm. um, men and women mm. who really care about what happens in their society. Mm. Saying no, 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 politics or leadership, uh, these things, eh? um, mm. these things, <laughs> they, they are not ours. Mm. These ones are... Mm, mm. Like the so, Sarah. <laughs> 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 the civil society is playing, they are playing a very, very good call. Yeah. Yes. We have had yes. <laughs> that, that becomes a I know. Yes. Yeah. So, so we have got to, to, to encourage ourselves mm -hmm. to take, take it up. Because, I mean, we want change. We mm -hmm. want peaceful transition. Mm. We want um, a, a free and fair election. Yeah. We want real democratic dividends. But those won't just be handed over to us. They will not. So we have got to get ourselves, mobilize ourselves. Mm. Unfortunately, I want to conclude with this. I think, you know, every time I keep thinking about God's wisdom, it's, it's just an you infinite. cannot understand it as a human being. Infinite. There is, there is so much, that, for instance, the creativity of humanity. God created it in such a limitless way. So, so in, in that innovative mind that God gave us, we could very easily coin ways of how we can bring change, peaceful transition, real democratic dividends to our society. Mm. It is very, very possible. Possible. And beautifully, the young leaders that have not given up, or the, the young people that are still want to participate in, in politics, this is the time. Mm -hmm. Let's not give up. The, the, losing one or two elections, that's a given, mm. especially in our, in our very unfortunate circumstances. <laughs> yes. That's going to happen. Yeah. There are going to be some sacrifices along the way. But that shouldn't scare us away. That should actually give us the impetus to participate more, mm -hmm. that we really need to cause this political change and cause the real democracy enjoyed by everyone, but not just a few. Because again, I don't know whether that can be democracy. It seems, I don't know whether one can coin democracy for a few. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, uh, um, uh, democracy for all, for all citizens. Leaving no one home, behind. Yeah, living in harmony, mm -hmm. living with hope yeah. is what we can struggle for is what we can achieve actually even in our lifetime. Mm. Thank, uh, you. thank you very much, uh, Honorable. And uh, of course, uh, thank you very much, our viewers, for, for being part of this conversation. Of course, the real take homes here that, uh, of course, the human mind is unlimited. Yeah, we need to keep our hopes high and we need to keep fighting. This, I think, this week for, of democracy has been heated. And of course, the reflection here resonates so much and of course speaks so much to the young people out there. It's a time that you need to come up, stand up, and take up this uh, leadership. And uh, thank you very much, of course, again, uh, my panelists, uh, uh, Monica, uh, Professor Latigo, Sarah, and uh, Gerard for being part of this conversation. And also our viewers out there, thank you very much for always being part of uh, these discussions every Friday. Please uh, join the conversations on our, uh, our Twitter hashtag, uh, ChatShowUG, but also on our uh, Democracy Day UG uh, hashtag. The conversation is ongoing. On uh, yeah, YouTube, Civic Space TV, please subscribe and be part of this conversation always. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Demiano Masesa. Let's meet next week.